it's 11 28 p.m so okay i got more storage space on my phone <clears throat> so here did y'all know that um <clears throat> if you know let me tell y'all the side effects of being a psych patient even i heard even if they say basically once you're in it you're both basically in it for life <clears throat> you you basically consider consider crazy for life <clears throat> if if you consider a psych patient you consider crazy for life and they make it like you know because it's a money maker big pharma <clears throat> so first of all your basic human rights are robbed from you you're not allowed to have a voice to speak out against abuse. <clears throat> and they make it like as if you have to have a mentally normal person to advocate on your behalf. But if you're a targeted individual, you don't really don't have anybody to advocate for for you except yourself. <clears throat> you know, so like I heard that if you're a child <clears throat> and you gotta see a psychiatrist and take medicine. Like, you basically, your future is robbed from you, and you don't even have a future. So, but the strange thing about being labeled crazy <clears throat> is um things that you want to do that make you happy <clears throat> and things that you want to, um. I mean, things that you want to do that make you happy and things that you want to, um, you, you know, accomplish, <clears throat> like goals in life. They make it like as if you don't have the mentality to do this. You don't have the mentality to do that. And I heard basically, if you're a psych patient as a child, you're blacklisted from employment. And set up from set up for homelessness before you even become an adult. I mean that decision is made for you. <clears throat> you know, so you're not allowed to represent yourself in court when you have your own crisis and situations. But then, if someone else is having a certain kind of incident then they expect you to be a, a competent witness and they can expect you to do jury duty and everything oh they think you can be mentally competent enough to do jury duty <clears throat> so I mean if y'all think I'm crazy, but I'm mentally competent, competent enough that I have to do forced jury duty. But you tell you think that I'm not mentally I with a college degree. You think I'm not mentally capable of driving a car? I've done it before. Are y'all trying to stop me from driving a car? I said children and teenagers have more rights than I do these days. And that does not, that's not trying to, has nothing to do with saying that I'm jealous of children or teenagers. That's not what I'm trying to say at all. What the purpose of trying to falsely accuse me of saying. <clears throat> oh, Candy admits every day that she's jealous of children and teenagers. That's not true at all. Just because I point out that. They have more freedom and more rights than I do. <clears throat> it's like I have shackles in my head with this mind control. Like invisible shackles in my head, in my brain. With the mind control. You know, in invisible mind shackles. Mental slavery uh, that I never consented to. Being a psych patient, people think you're potentially dangerous. And and it's like, 
a lot of these people who are, I mean, who condone the psychiatry and mental health and abuse and stuff, they're witches, warlocks, occultists, new agers, narcissistic abusers, Freemasons, Eastern stars. Uh, what am I missing? <clears throat> Gang stalkers. Um, yeah, all that and yeah, all that and more. <clears throat> so. In my personal case, I get called insane for striving to do things that make me happy. But then I have to hear that, oh, Candy is too negative, energy draining, and complain too much. And she's miserable. And she's a miserable in love company. <clears throat> and she likes it that way. She likes suffering. She likes being abused. She enjoys being abused. She loves being homeless. She likes being out there on the streets. She likes that lifestyle. <clears throat> but y'all enjoy for me to have this forced life that's not a style because I don't choose it. <clears throat> and so. Like, like I'm just I'm just like not allowed to have rights, not allowed to have a voice, not allowed to represent myself in court, you know, <clears throat> but then if falsely accused of a crime, I mean, if, if you think that I'm not capable of take, getting married, you think I'm not capable of taking raising a child. <clears throat> <clears throat> that um yeah people doubted me and I, I barely made it through college <clears throat> that I didn't have that I was not college the foster mom used to bully harass and lecture me tell me that I'm not college material you know <clears throat> no reason should she have been controlling my life my physical appearance my life, my money, my relationships, friendships, none of that after I turned 18. That's why I come to the conclusion that she was my handler and put me in the program, the gang stalking program. And I feel bad that I had Stockholm Syndrome. And my... My twin sister, I believe, still has it because now she's trying to act out with how the foster mom used to treat both of us. And my twin sister couldn't handle being treated like that. She didn't like it. <clears throat> she did. The foster sister, Shelly, used to perp us. She used to be a perp. And she still, uh, she still would be a perp. <clears throat> you know, trying to and the biological sister Ramona is a gang stalking perp also. You know, do stuff on purpose just to make you mad or try to sex, sex you up to fail or set a trap <clears throat> to try to make a fool out of you and then mock and laugh and think it's funny <clears throat> and stuff like that. <clears throat> and see, <clears throat> I mean... I have, I'm passionate and wanting to shake and wake people up to the truth. <clears throat> the truth and see the world for what it really is. I have been shut down and censored so many times. In a crooked world where a fake Jehovah's Witness cult member can go on college campuses and spread their false literature. But if I go on that same college campus and, um, you know, share some Christian gospel tracts, I can be put in handcuffs and hauled off in a police car you know, as a Christian persecution. 
<clears throat> but um and, and I heard in some cases like I heard about that child who was like seven years old and they hurt my they hit hurt my stomach for talking about this. I guess they're trying to make me shut up. A seven year old child was forced to go like he brought a Bible to school and the teachers um had him put in a mental institution to have his head examined. <clears throat> I used, I was once there, brainwashed in a cult and was programmed and brainwashed to hate Christians and hate Jesus Christ with the IDMR cult. And then add psychiatry onto that. And I remember telling this girl who turned out to be a perp and a witch. Oh, I told her the name is Lord God and Jesus Christ are not allowed in my house. I think it, I don't remember what year that was. Probably in 2007, 8 or 9. <clears throat> and, um... She was. She turned out to be a narcissistic, control freak, fake friend, and a perp. Who um gave me cursed furniture to cause me to flip out and lose my mind and go crazy, and then left out of town and thought it was funny. And she falsely professed to be Christian. <clears throat> and I didn't know anything about anything spiritual at the time. Until years later, realizing that Euraline Williams from the country Dominica was a narcissistic, control freak, fake friend, and a perp. <laughs> and, um, you know, so now, um, I accept the Lord Jesus Christ. My behavior, Christian behavior, and my walk with Jesus Christ, I'm not always on a narrow path. I know. I, I know I need to do better as a Christian. <clears throat> but, you know, I'm trying to better myself. You know, I know I walk disorderly sometimes. Fighting these gang stalking fools. You know. <clears throat> but... I better get my spiritual house in order. I know I do. You know, in psychiatry and mental health. I, I mean, I guess they, they want to... um. I heard that psychiatry robs you of your soul. And they say that... You, you know, when you take those psych medications... It takes away your soul. <clears throat> and then you walk around like an empty <clears throat> and and the, the side effects of those psych medications make you do people you know I never heard of a female mass shooting but you notice how mainly white people or foreign people or Arab or whatever but <clears throat> a couple of blacks but mainly males I never heard of a female mass shooter But I was 11 years old on Prozac and pulling knives on people. Being homicidal and suicidal on Prozac. And that's the pill that I was taking that people were calling me, gre people were calling me greedy and fat for eating so much. I started to gain weight. Before then, I was skinny and didn't have overeating problems. You know, so I feel like if I die under the control, not care, because they don't care. If I d die under the control of psychiatry, 
and die with psych medications in my system or if I die you know with psychiatry then I know I won't be fit to inherit the kingdom of heaven I used to be more aggressive and more violent on those medications I'm not so violent much anymore like I used to be I used to be more hateful when I didn't know any better and on those medications. <clears throat> you know, but I even on those medications, I wouldn't have killed anybody, you know, and I wouldn't have harmed a child. You know, I got a certain age and realized that I wanted to undo the abuse that happened to me I didn't want to turn around and start abusing people and I know that you know like when I was 22 years old and acted out the punishments that I had happened to me like when the foster mom it was in 2006 and when I was a little kid they used to have forced me to stand on my knees as a punishment you know, what in in first grade at school with books in my hand. So when I told the foster boy Nick to stand on his knees, they hollered child abuse. And I'm like, wait a minute. How come it wasn't called child abuse when you did it to me? And the foster me and the foster mom and the foster sister showed me had arguments about that, you know. <clears throat> so the foster mom used those foster boys to be perps. Like the foster boy, James Joseph, Corey Ploche, and quite a few others. You know, Corey and his brother, Brent Ploche. People like them being, you know, used to gang stalk me. The foster mom used those foster boys to perp me. And they're living their best lives. They're living their lives. Even though they don't have Jesus Christ. But they're, li they're, they're living their lives though. And that's one thing I forget. Like the foster mom try to tell me. I don't have the mentality. The sense or the business driving. Or having a car. And here I'm 18. I'm 38 years old now. I'm sorry not 18. I'm 38 years old now. With. One, hold on, let me show y'all. I don't know if y'all can see it. It might be too dark, but one strand of gray hair somewhere up in here. When I was 32 years old, I had a couple of strands of gray hair somewhere around here. <clears throat> but my rights being robbed and stripped from me. Like, my rights being robbed and stripped from me because of that mental health label. <clears throat> I heard if you're a mental health patient, then you, as a child, then you blacklisted from employment before you even graduate from high school. I guess unless in, or until you sell out and, sell out and, and you know, join the secret club, secret societies. It's just not right at all. Twisted. Not always been a freaking outcast. Never been accepted by society. Trying too hard was never good enough. And they, the more I tried, the more they rejected. Society rejected me. The more I tried to fit in. So I quit fit, trying to fit in and just found more freedom with trying to be myself. And, um... I like it that way, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> so, um, it's like, now how, as I said, how, as a psych patient, you can't, I mean, you can't, people won't take you seriously or believe you of your own psychiatric abuse 
your own foster care abuse, your own police brutality abuse, abuse in a cult. People won't listen to you or, or you talk about being raped. They're laughing your face and don't believe you. <clears throat> so your voice is take robbed from you. And this is what people are brainwashed to want for their family members. You're brainwashed to want this for your family members. Because you know that psychiatry kills. Mental health kills. It's murder. <clears throat> it's all about doggone... It comes from Satan. Steal, kill, and destroy. They want to steal and commit insurance fraud, you know, by throwing you, locking you up in a mental hospital, and then jack up, run, and keep you there until your insurance runs out, then let you back out in society. <clears throat> and, and then they, um, you know, and they control what you eat and how much you eat in a mental hospital. Treat you like a punished child in detention. How is that healing? How is added trauma in a certain facility? How is it healing? <clears throat> and they rape, torture, and abuse mental health patients who are in, who are drugged up in a mental hospital. It's the pits of hell in a mental hospital. You got you don't even have the right to eat what you want. And it's supposed to be punishment. And they figure if you behave or act a certain way, then you get rewarded with, you know, getting out early. <clears throat> but then they have perps that come there like the day or a day or two that you're supposed to leave. They have perps to come agitate you on purpose to set you up to stay there longer. And then dealing with more abuse. And everybody ganging up on you and perping you and abusing you in a mental hospital. And um, it's just really sad. You know, it, it, those psych meds can turn you into... A violent person or a murderer that you normally would not be if you weren't forced to take those doggone medicines <clears throat> and I heard that a person with on the psych meds will have a glaze over their eyes some of them are said to walk around with dead eyes or eyes that look soulless I was growing up I was told I always looked lost that was, you know, and people said I had a glaze over my eyes. Or I always looked like the foster mom used to say. Walking around looking like you in a daze. Walking around looking like you in a daze. And the foster sister Shelly used to say that we, act, that we act like we have a fart on our brains. You know, that doggone dissociation and mind control. And mind wander off into a daydream. And then me fighting out unwanted intrusive thoughts. I'm 38 years old, still got to fight out unwanted intrusive thoughts. You know, and there are thoughts that I don't want to think. And I'm wondering if that could be from directed energy weapons being beamed at me, tormented with unwanted intrusive thoughts. That no pill in the world will, will help me. No pill takes the thoughts away. So. <clears throat> it's just not right. You know. How. Your life is set up for destruction and failure. Before you can even turn 18. And, you, you know, like, you're not allowed to have 
as a psych patient, you're not allowed to have boyfriends, husband, wife, girlfriend, children, basic things, you know, that normal people do. You're deprived from, and then they turn around and blame you for being different. And But they're blocking you from fitting in like normal, but they purposely block you from fitting in like normal, but then they turn around and tell you, that you need to learn how to fit in. Wow. <clears throat> you know, you can't even eat what you want. You, <clears throat> you can't drive a car. They try to make it like you're not mentally capable. But the moment you're accused of a crime, true or false, then they want to hold you accountable like an adult. They make it like you're not allowed to make your own decisions. That like you gotta have conservative somebody to have conservatorship over you. Well, I don't have anybody have conservatorship over me at the moment. But the foster mom or my twin sister or the biological gay brother Mark would be that type to seek narcissistic enough to seek conservatorship over me. The same way that Britney Spears' dad, you know, put conservatorship over her. And I gotta go, y'all, because these fuckers are uh, anally raping me in my booty hole electronically. So I gotta go.